welcome to a new episode of In Other Words with Danielle and Zara. So this is a podcast where we talk about a wide variety of different subjects from conflict to wokeness. So in other words, we talk about all, all the, the things. things. Right, so every episode we have asked subscribers to send us questions or whatever. Yes. So I'm just going to play the voice notes from, from Michaela. Michaela. Hey there, In Other Words podcast. I would just like to know, what do you guys do when you are not focusing on the podcast? Thank you. So cute. Very cute. All right, Zara, what do you do? Oh, nothing, eh? Nothing. Just, yeah, Kelly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so rude. <laughs> well, actually, as much as... Imagine we were podcasters and that was our job. I would love that. I would love that mm. too. But unfortunately, we don't actually spend that much time focusing mm -hmm. on the podcast just because we don't really have the time no um so yeah but what i do outside of the podcast is i work because mm -hmm. you gotta work mm -hmm. i work for durbanville baptist church Phew. as an intern and i also work Shout out Image Bearers. Mm -hmm. I do content creation for Image Bearers once a week. Do you think Durbanville Baptist Church will be offended that you didn't shout them out? Shout out to <laughs> Durbanville Baptist Church. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, and then I like to sing. I don't spend that much time singing though. Mm. I should sing more. You should sing more. Not to me though. I don't want to hear it. Wow. <laughs> um, okay, me. I am doing my honours at the moment. I want to do my master's next year. We'll see how that goes, though. And yeah, I've, as I, I feel like I bring this up in every single episode, but I've just finished writing my honors research assignment. So, like, that's the majority of the work for the year done, luckily. So, now what I really do is I go on my phone quite a lot, unfortunately. You do. Um, You're a reading machine these I days. I read a lot. I, my one. What's it called? New Year's resolution was mm -hmm. to read at least a book a month. And I'm on track so far. I'm currently reading Dune, which is... I'm actually getting into it now. I wasn't getting into it at read. all. But I, I feel like I'm understanding things now. So that's good. And I watch series. I'm currently watching Good Girls, which I'm really enjoying. So check that out if you want. I play the piano when I'm at home. And yeah, I play with my dogs. Oh, yes. Your dog. <laughs> Yes. Oh, also, I occasionally rescue birds. Oh, yeah. I felt like I needed to say that so fun. because my it's like your part time job. Silly, silly Alex dog this morning brought a bird to me, so she's currently being nursed back to her. I really love that for you. We had a bird once, Georgie. Georgie. She was beautiful. Yeah. And then I don't know what happened to her, but she's not here anymore. <laughs> but that's that's a story for another day. No, clo <laughs> no closure. No closure. Okay, today. Yes. Do you want to tell the people? Okay, so today we wanted to speak a bit about the paradox of tolerance. Yes. But what we've come to realize is that like that denotes quite a specific thing. So we're yes. just going to speak a lot about intolerance and tolerance, like in terms of society and free speech and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Because it's, I feel like that's been quite a hot topic at the moment. Yeah, for sure. Um, Especially with social media and social everyone media, having something to yeah, say. With COVID, with, you know, like the rise in social issues, all that yeah. kind of stuff. So should I read my very long quote that I screenshotted? Yes. Okay, so we can just start with the paradox of tolerance. Which I originally called the intolerance, intolerance of the so-called tolerant. tolerant. Yes. And then Danielle very educationally corrected me yes so this term i don't know if the guy came up with it or if he just wrote about it and like made it famous his name was Karl popper <clears throat> yes this is in the 1940s so it's yeah, not even it's that old it's yeah it's not an it's study. not like a super new idea it's not like this thing that has only emerged now but obviously it like it makes sense because this was at the time of nazism and all that kind of stuff yes so the quote goes as such unlimited tolerance must lead to the disappearance of tolerance if we extend unlimited tolerance even to those who are intolerant, if we are not prepared to defend a tolerant society against the onslaughts of the intolerant, then the tolerant will be destroyed and tolerance with them. In this formulation, I do not imply, for instance, that we should always suppress the utterance of intolerant philosophies as long as we can counter them by rational arguments and keep them in check by public opinion. Suppression would certainly be unwise. But we should claim the right to suppress them if necessary, even by force, for it may easily turn out that they are not prepared to meet us on the level of rational argument. 
but begin by denouncing all argument. They may forbid their followers to listen to rational argument because it is deceptive and teach them to answer arguments by the use of their fists or pistols. We should therefore claim, in the name of tolerance, the right not to tolerate the intolerant. Mm-hmm. It's quite a hectic quote. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thoughts. Yes. Go. So I think to for those of you who may be zoned out during that, yes. I think the question that we need to ask is, we're kind of living in this postmodern society where there's this idea of my truth and not absolute truth. Mm-hmm. And so there's like a a huge call in like mainstream media and in the majority of people who are using their voices Mm -hmm. to say we need to be just more tolerant as human beings. And basically this idea or this concept is difficult because when you are a tolerant person, Mm. we all can agree that there's certain things that we just cannot tolerate should not tolerate yes so basically this concept is if we choose to tolerate everything Mm. like as a society Mm. then there will be the people who are generally intolerant Mm. and we can't tolerate everything that that they tolerate yeah and so that's how there's uprising and bad things happen like in nazi germany yes so yes it's kind of this concept of navigating what do we tolerate Mm. and to what extent do we express our opinions and respect other people's opinions yeah yeah so i mean what i um i like generally agree with the idea of like the quote that i read and the paradox of tolerance obviously i think like a danger that can arise is, you know you get this dichotomy of like the us versus them thing like yes we are the tolerant and they are the intolerant yes and but i that think that in itself yeah which is which can be a problem because also yes. who can decide what is right and what is wrong yes but like i'm going to say now like there are certain things you know like we should not tolerate racism we should not tolerate sexism um homophobia all of that kind of stuff things where people's rights are taken away Mm -hmm. or people are um spoken down upon or oppressed like those are things that should absolutely not be tolerated yes um but what i liked about the quote is that he said like you shouldn't just suppress something immediately you know like if the person is willing to have a rational argument or a rational discussion then like you should be open to that and i completely agree with that because oftentimes i think people don't always know what they're saying or like they will say something that they've heard or that they've been taught by their parents or by whatever group they're part of you listen to our podcast and i <laughs> just believe everything we say yes. don't do and that often like they'll uh, buy into these really intolerant ideas yes. and even though it may not seem necessarily harmful it can lead to a very harmful thing i mean yes case in point nazi germany yes um which was which was just generally harmful but i mean the people at the time didn't necessarily know what was going on you yes. know they were just forming part of the society mm-hmm. um so yeah that was my point. I had something <laughs> else to say, but I can't remember, as always. <laughs> um, yes, I think the issue when I was kind of even just doing some self-analysis mm-hmm. is I think our problem as human beings is that we want to play God. Yeah. And the idea that our ideas and opinions mm-hmm. could possibly be wrong is like unfathomable yeah and even when we say like no i admit that i can be wrong Mm. if you have a strong enough opinion Mm. then in your world that is right yeah and so like i think something i have struggled with is and you can maybe tell me what your thoughts are on Mm -hmm. this is to what extent do you respect Mm -hmm. other people um at the cost of chaos yes do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. I just, I think about it in like protests that go, that turn into violence. Mm. Like to what extent do we justify people's actions? Yeah. Like even now the, the issues that have, have just recently happened in South Africa. Mm-hmm. And to what extent do we say, well, people are, were in poverty and this is kind of a last resort. So mm. let's loot shops and stuff mm. like that. To what extent do we show sympathy and respect yeah. mm. even if it's at the cost of yeah. chaos yeah that's a, a good question i don't necessarily have the answer for it <sighs> like for me i would always suggest to start with having compassion 
mm-hmm. um, to start with having some kind of um, sympathy. Because like I said, you know, people do things for specific reasons and like being an outsider to the cause, whatever you don't always understand. Um, but I think if you learn about something or if, if what they are doing is hurting more people than not, yes. then I think it's like a really big problem or if what they are doing is like oppressing people or taking people's rights away Mm -hmm. destroying people's businesses even like it's quite a big thing but i mean even if you think back to um you know like you think of things like the french uh revolution Revolution. um even the civil rights movement to an extent even the anti-apartheid movement to an extent like these were all like necessary things to end slavery oppressive regimes yes so i don't know like it's a difficult question yes and also like everyone has every group or whatever has their specific norms and values that they adhere to yes um so like someone on the outside will just simply not understand how they could possibly think that certain things are okay exactly so yeah what do you think i don't know i feel like it's difficult and i almost to an extent and i don't know how right this is Mm. but i kind of believe that there shouldn't ever be an excuse for violence yeah and i think it's interesting is even in a court of law Mm. you are allowed self-defense like you Mm. won't be if a judge deems like some sort of violence as self-defense you won't be arrested but every other like violent act Mm. is kind of put like you face justice you Mm. know so for me like when any kind of violence ensues Mm. then that's when i have an issue yeah like it starts to become quite uncomfortable yes yeah the one thing though that i i struggle with personally because i can't decide is so an example you know you have racist family members Mm. to what extent do you just accept it Mm. when do you speak up against it um if you say you how do you tolerate it Mm. because then are you accept if you tolerate something does that mean you accept something Mm. yeah i don't know it's very it's very interesting like so let's put let's say that you're in a situation where you have racist family members Mm. how do you handle that i used to be of the opinion that you could kind of just like ignore it Mm mm-hmm um, but I think, I don't know, after last year, specifically after, you know, the Black Lives Matter movements and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. I've decided that you can't just sit around and tolerate it, that you shouldn't tolerate it even. Like, if I strongly believe that something is wrong or that's, that someone's opinion is wrong and is hurting people and yes. is contributing to more oppression, then, like, why should I sit around? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think the best way, especially if it comes to family members and especially if it's older family members... I think you do have to understand where they're coming from and not to say that racism is ever just like justifiable but um coming from a country like south africa where a lot of the older people have grown up and i mean we're still facing the consequences today but a lot of the other the older people they've grown up in apartheid you know Mm -hmm. and they were growing up just indoctrinated even if they didn't know they were being indoctrinated with these racist ideas and it's very difficult to break out of that especially if you're not associating with people of other races with other ethnicities or anything like that but i think what you should i personally think if someone shares something let's say on a group or if someone says something to you you should say like no like that's not okay and that's actually Mm -hmm. racist and then like explain why it's racist because like i said a lot of the times people will literally just say something and they'll be like no, but it wasn't racist. And you'll be like, yeah, yes. it actually was because you're um, disrespecting like a whole entire race group. So, yes. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I think that I 100% feel like you should stand up against it and express like mm. anything that you are feel strongly about, you should have the right to express. But I also think there's a lot of power in conversation absolutely you don't just shut them down no and i think this is the issue with social media is that people can say things without facing any consequences Mm. and like in the situation with a family member i it's the most difficult thing to do as a human being because as logical and like 
racism isn't okay, Mm -mm. you know, and it's not logical to think it's okay. Yeah. But the reality is we have to recognize that differing opinions exist. Yeah. And as hard as as it is to Mm. fathom that another person could possibly be racist, Mm. like how can you justify that in your mind? Mm. Like not even to the extent where it's like, oh, I know what I'm doing is wrong. Like, Mm. no, I genuinely think that like white people are above black people Mm. and it's almost like it's easy it's frustrating you know and Mm, it's absolutely you you, it angers you hopeless as well because often the time oftentimes people just simply don't want to admit either that they are being racist or if they do admit that they don't want to admit like that it's wrong yes so so for me conversation is the most powerful thing Mm. because then you have opportunity you have the opportunity to have an honest dialogue with another human Mm. being say this is where i'm coming from that's where you're coming from and something i've learned is that unfortunately some battles aren't worth fighting Mm. and some people are never going to change their mind on certain Mm. things and it's not my responsibility to Mm. change someone's minds it's not possible and i think the only time that we should become extra passionate if you will is when it is doing harm to other people Mm. so if someone's naturally racist and sitting in their home Mm. and thinking what they think i would say something Mm. but it's not it's not possible for me to change there's only so much you can do as an individual but i mean i i I do personally believe that like if they if those person is constantly speaking to you about things Mm -hmm. or whatever like i I don't know for me at least i feel like there is some kind of like moral responsibility to be like "Uh, no that's not right yeah and also you never really know like what is going on with that person like oftentimes people are you know involved in like whatsapp groups where they all send each other the same information about like i don't know it could be about anything it could be about like anti-vax stuff or it could be like um, racist stuff you know you know what i'm saying like people can and i found this really well not surprising actually but especially over COVID so many people have been radicalized in different ways it could be like mm-hmm. like very conservatively radicalized or very like liberally Liberal, um, yes. radicalized um and like it's kind of like I think it's a, a problem I think okay first of all I believe that it's okay for people to have certain idea- ideas but the problem with like radicalization is that you almost become completely closed off to any anything else anything else and that is like the most dangerous yeah place to be yeah and it's like you actually it's almost like you can't hear what the other person is saying to you yes or like you simply can't understand it yes um which is obviously not good but yeah Hmm. i think one thing that we need to relearn it's an old concept but like actually agree to disagree Mm. it's almost like we've lost the ability to agree to disagree Mm. and so for example like i'm a christian i believe with all my heart that it is the religion if you want to and that my god is the real god kind of thing Mm. but and no one i mean i really doubt anyone is ever going to change my mind on Mm. that but it doesn't mean that i'm going to shut off all conversation or that learning about other people's beliefs Mm. is somehow wrong wrong for me to do and yeah it's just i think we have to get to a point where it's like you can have a conversation in a relationship with someone Mm. and recognize that we are different yeah and this is an issue we are never going to agree on Mm. and i think it's just very scary for there to be division Mm. based on opinion Mm. when it doesn't need to affect Mm. a relationship yeah does that make sense yeah i think like i i obviously do understand what you're saying but i also don't think it can be applied to like everything Mm -hmm. like for me i cannot be friends with someone who is sexist or racist like i really can't do that you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. because i think there are some opinions that i don't agree with like you know so some political opinions like some people might support whatever political leader and i think that they're dumb (laughs) and but like i can still be friends with them because it's like whatever it is what it is yes but the minute like this person keeps on like spewing hatred yes i can't like i can't just agree to disagree with something Mm -hmm. like that and i'm sure like you feel the same way you're not you're not friends with like any bigoted people or anything i don't think so (laughs) hopefully not um so i think yeah i think like there is a line to something like that Mm -hmm. um 
Yeah. Like some like you shouldn't cut off your friends because you, you know have one disagreement. Yeah, because of one disagreement. Yes. But if your morals are like completely not aligned, I don't think that you should Well I don't The th- reality is I don't think you will tend them. I don't th- you your yeah. vibe attracts your tribe. Exactly. It's like your favorite <laughs> your favorite saying. But reality is you you yeah. probably won't fall into that stream of yeah. friendships anyway. You shouldn't. Yeah. But I think it's just important to recognise that you know, it's mm. okay to have disagreements. It is okay. And Absolutely. it's sometimes important yeah. that you are not surrounded by... You shouldn't be friends with only people who think the same thing as you. Because yes. then also you're going to be stuck in this echo chamber. Yes. Um, and if you don't know what an echo chamber is, it's basically like where you believe this one thing. And everyone that you spend time with also believes the same thing. And you keep on like having the same opinions and everyone's like yes, yes i agree with you yes i agree with you yes i agree and with then you. again there's this like superiority complex of yeah like it becomes I, this whole i have to be right yeah. look we all agree on this and it also becomes this whole like us versus them yes, thing again like exactly our group is the right group exactly okay and then i had like a question for you um because this is something i often have to think about and i think it's important that especially with your social media and even the things you say, you should mm. think before you speak. You should, yes. Something I have battled with at times. <laughs> yes. But when do you decide, okay, I'm going to post something. I'm going to comment on something. Mm. Like, And I've often with you, like I'll send you something. Yes. Like I'll type out something and I'm like, okay, what do you mm. think about this? Am I sending a good message? Am I mm. getting my point across? So what is your advice to someone who's like, should I post this? Should I share this? Yeah. So um, first of all, I think... Like you said, it it is actually really good to maybe send something to your friend or just get a second opinion if yes. you want to post something. Um, but I think, I mean, if you didn't really know me outside of the podcast, you'd probably think that I'm like quite vocal mm-hmm. on social media. And You're I very so, quiet. I am quiet, and like I do, I do like post if there's a certain issue that I feel strongly about. Mm-hmm. But I think what I've learned over the past many years of being on social media mm-hmm. and I still make mistakes to this day I still don't listen to myself sometimes mm-hmm. but well, in, in the heat of the moment yeah it's really difficult Ugh. but just take like don't rush to post something or like if you want to comment on something that someone else has posted just like take a step back and think for a moment mm-hmm. I, find I think I, we've both made this mistake where yes. we've commented although I've never really regretted anything that I say because like I do feel strongly most of the time about what I say. Mm-hmm. I'm like I'm not the kind of person just to say like to say something for the sake of saying it. Um, but I find what is quite helpful actually is just you know type something in your like notes app or whatever. Yes. Um, and then just leave it there for a little bit, and then come back when you're not <laughs> Let feeling. It simmer. Yeah. Come back when you're not feeling so heated or so passionate or angry or bitter or whatever the heck yes. you're feeling. And read it again. See, okay, is this something I really want to put online? Um, If it is, is this really how I want to word it? Or does it have, like, a weird tone about it? Mm -hmm. And I think another important thing is don't just post something to aggravate people. Yes. The worst is, like, targeted posts. Yeah. I don't see the point, to to a person. Yeah. Even, like, I just think when you're having a fight with your boyfriend, and high school's already did this. (laughs) Or, like, you know, when you're in a bad mood or you're, like, then you'll post something like, certain people shouldn't da, da, da. Yeah. and it's very like, clearly yeah. aimed at a person yeah, like we know you're talking about someone yes and so i think yeah i as difficult as it is i think we need to and this is kind of moving on to a different topic mm. but we need to be able to separate people from mm. their opinions absolutely as human beings yes our opinions formulate the person mm. we are mm. but a human being isn't an opinion yes and opinions change all the exactly. time exactly I, like i often think like in 20 years time i'll look back at this podcast yeah. and i'll be like sorry you're so ignorant because chances are yeah you know i mean like as a person you should always be learning and you should always be open to new information yes in my opinion i agree yeah um Oh my gosh, I was going to say something. Okay, carry on. (laughs) (laughs) Been losing our our train of thought a lot. So one thing that I feel passionate about when it comes to tolerance and intolerance Mm -hmm. is that you need to recognize the difference between being defensive and being offensive. Mm. So if someone says something and you disagree with it, and you're a type of person who, so let's just say, 
that you believe that like racism is wrong Mm -hmm. and you call a person's like character into question for thinking that Mm -hmm. and understandably so you would Mm -hmm. um the one the thing that bugs you most about racism is that you're not recognizing the value of a person Mm -hmm. so when you comment on a racist post are you going to come forward with that same level of hate Mm -hmm. and does that solve the problem yes i understand what you mean so and i think it's so important that we learn to not fight fire with fire Mm. so how how would you go about something like that yes so i think it's important to remain like to the facts and to the ideas Mm. um rather than calling out the person Mm. like Like you are so stupid for thinking that like isn't that's actually not going to help someone no and you reality is you probably think that in your mind i definitely think that sorry (laughs) to say no you definitely (laughs) think that in your mind but it's really important that everyone kind of deserves to have their opinions Mm. and if people choose to share hate i think it's so important that you Mm. if you're gonna fight fight with passion yes but do it in love yeah and like focus on like actually actual education yes um but now i was just thinking you know just like this whole idea of freedom of speech and all that kind of stuff because you know a lot of people have spoken like oh this is taking away my freedom of speech if someone calls them out then people immediately think oh my freedom of speech is being taken away kind of stuff and i think what's important to remember I mean, I was reading up of like what they say in our constitution about freedom of, freedom of expression. And like it very explicitly says like you have the right to express in like whatever manner you want, but you have like the responsibility not to have like, not to say hate speech, not to like spread lies, kind of that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Um, and I think oftentimes what people forget is that like, yeah, you have freedom of speech, but so does everyone else. So that's another thing, right? It's like, you know the whole thing of fake news that's something i don't really tolerate if someone if something pops up whatsapp facebook instagram Mm -hmm. and i can like sometimes people will i don't know share an article and something about it will just make me think no that seems kind of sus and so then i will go and like google it and then i will find the actual information and then i'll just send it back to them like sorry that's not true Mm -hmm. but i think something that's really come up And it's like this whole post-truth society where anything you believe what you want to believe is the truth. So like there isn't like this idea of no absolute truth. I mean, uh, this is probably this has probably um, been coming for some time, but I've seen it a lot recently. It's where people just simply choose not to believe anything that is actually like is regarded as a fact. If you know what I mean. So you can share something that is factual and the person can be like, well, that doesn't fit with my worldview. So I'm yes. choosing not to believe that that's true. Yeah. And I think that's quite a thing that's come up. But that was a bit of a tangent. But anyway. I know what you mean. But yeah. I also think in that regard, then you are free to have your opinions and not share them. Yes. And there's a time and place for everything. Mm. Just like you don't make out in front of like, a million people yes or i mean maybe you do yeah but just like you you kind of learn there's a time and place for things mm. like you were saying there's certain things you just won't wear to church yeah and i think it's the same with mm. our thoughts and our opinions yeah is like even with this podcast mm. if we are in a specific like political like climate or we know that something mm. is maybe a bit too sensitive right now yeah. or you know you kind of need to read the room Mm. read the climate of the Mm. environment you know yeah i mean like we like we speak about a lot on the podcast yes but you know i was thinking the other day like there's so much that i haven't shared Mm -hmm. um things that i think things that i do like i don't even know like i'm vegetarian by the way i don't know if anyone knew that i don't think i've ever mentioned on the podcast before um but it's like you don't know about the person a lot and like someone can share something and you i find oftentimes i'm and i think everyone is like this because you kind of have like these maps in your brain about what you think a person is like and then you mm-hmm. kind of piece things together right yes so i think oftentimes people will share maybe one article and in your head that links up with like a whole bunch of other ideas so yes. you're like oh that person is like that yes they must believe that yes exactly yes so that yeah that's very 
Yeah. Very dangerous. <laughs> Very dangerous. And something that I've also begun to realize is that, and you've just mentioned the idea of like facing the consequences of mm. your actions. And I often think if you aren't willing to say something now, there's a difference between being willing to say something if questioned and choosing to share it or not. Mm. So if you are ashamed to admit something out loud, mm. then you need to check yourself. Yes. So then you need to ask yourself, like, if I don't need, if I don't feel right saying this out loud, mm. then maybe I'm in the wrong. Maybe mm. I should go and do some learning because mm. I've seen that in myself as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm like, ooh, no, sorry. Like, yeah, I don't want to say that. <laughs> yeah, check yourself. Yeah. Like, why are you thinking that mm. and I think it's crazy to me how like as Christians again like we we let's just say know that we are right or we think that we're right mm. it's also we need to recognize that God gave us free will mm. you know like mm. God could have made us robots and could have made us think a certain way mm. and yet as human beings we have free will yeah and I think part of recognizing someone's value is giving them mm. the opportunity and the freedom to live in the free world that God has given them. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, I think it's also interesting to just realize that, like, mm. this is something, like, we were born into this idea of making our own decisions. That's true. Sometimes I wish that we weren't, to be right. honest. Right. I sometimes wish that my whole life could have been, like, mapped out in front of me and mm -hmm. these are the decisions that I'm going to make. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's something i wish sometimes <laughs> yes now i get you and again going back to social media i always think if i'm not willing to say something to someone's face mm. i probably shouldn't type it absolutely yeah, yeah it's very easy to hide behind yes. a screen yeah but yeah i think i don't know i was thinking you know you were speaking about like separating the the person from the idea and all that kind of stuff um and i think i don't know like i was um, I don't know if this person is listening right now, but like I was, this person like kind of called me out a little bit and they're like, oh, you often like offend people or something. So I was like, that doesn't seem like me at all. Yes. And it's because I had told them that I think their ideas are, what was the word? Um, uh, problematic. Na naive. Or naive. No, na I said the, yeah, ignorant, I naive. No, naive. I said naive. I didn't say ignorant because I would, that, like, that to me is a bit more problematic yes. than naive. And I think, well, in my opinion, at least, like, I think I managed to separate, like, I don't think you're naive, yes. but I think this may, like, the specific this idea. idea that you hold is a bit naive. And yes. I think, um, I think it's, like, important, you know, if someone calls you out, just to kind of, you know, take a step back and think, like, okay, is this person, you know, like, trying to offend me and call me out right now? Mm -hmm. Or are they just questioning my ideas or yes. questioning my opinions? Mm -hmm. And I think oftentimes, like if someone questions your opinions, then it is really easy to think that they are trying to, you know, silence you and to yes. like oppress you kind of thing. But oftentimes like they're not really. And they're saying like, oh, maybe you should think about this. Yes. Um, and obviously you do get people who just are angry and just want to, you know, call you out for everything that you say. Yes. I mean, that's their choice to do that yes. but then it's also, it can also be your choice to ignore that mm -hmm. so I yeah. agree um and then just the some examples that I thought of yes so I'm gonna call this article out Ooh. maybe not the person okay but their opinion so and like it confuses me mm -hmm. and I'll tell you why so I read an article and it's been widely shared you might have actually seen it mm -hmm. the article's name Oh, my phone just died, guys. <gasps> no. Okay, I'll explain you to you. Yes. Okay. The article was like something about if COVID get the effing vaccine. And basically, I think I have seen it. Going every, on. I don't think I've read it though. Every sentence in the article like has the word F in it. Okay. And it was like, you kind of effing idiots. And again, now don't mm. quote me because I don't have the article in front of me. Okay. Go read the article. Yeah. Um, And it'll probably come up. If you just yeah, I'm pretty sure I've in. seen it on Instagram yes. or Twitter or something. And it was like, you effing people, don't you care about others? Mm. Um, you, if you don't get like vaccinated, then you risk like getting a baby in the, like a baby getting sick and landing on a ventilator oh kind gosh. of thing. Okay. And this person is basically telling people that they are 
selfish mm. and questioning the integrity and morality of someone who chooses not to get the vaccine mm. but when you're doing it in such an offensive manner and your defense mm. is that you want to protect the greater good and mm. you want to show compassion to others mm. like why are you going in direct indirectly calling another person out mm. you are doing the absolute opposite of what you're asking yeah. them to do yeah yeah i find those things are often like i mean that's like to me is a big paradox you yes. know what i'm saying it's like a really big contradiction and i think i mean we've spoken a bit about the vaccine arguments and all that and like I don't know. It's very difficult to convince people that you are right or whatever if you're going to attack them like that. Exactly. And I find especially using swear words is oh not gosh. going about it in the right way. And like especially if you think that a lot of the people who are very vaccine hesitant, I mean, I'm not so sure about everywhere, but here I know like a lot of the older people are quite vaccine hesitant and a lot of the older people are like more conservative. Um, often more religious and therefore swearing at them will simply not do anything yeah and especially if you're using scare tactics such as are you going to get a baby sick and it's going to be on a ventilator i mean if that's what the article said of course yes. like at least spread truth you know what i'm saying yes. because okay don't quote me on this but as far as i know babies and like younger people exactly. are not the ones who are ending up on exactly ventilators. that's why it was, that was confusing to me yeah so i think once again it's for me it's always important you know to spread facts yes to spread education or to say like i think this is the compassionate thing to do mm -hmm. but obviously everyone has their own opinions to that and i respect that um but once again like i think the problem is and especially with this whole vaccine thing you can spread something that is factually correct mm -hmm. and then people who are anti-vaccine will literally just say no but that's just the mainstream media that's like that's yes. the only thing even though like you can literally listen to an actual doctor or an actual nurse who's not financially benefiting from anyone getting a vaccine yes and they'll say to you this is the case that's happening right now yes um but yeah people just simply choose to believe what is a fact to them and not what is like a fact yes and i'm saying it's mm -hmm. like oh it's this whole thing it's really concerning actually yes yeah i think my whole message because i said like we're ranting a lot and kind of trying to understand this issue mm. but i think the important thing and the message kind of that i really want to get across in this episode is just to not make assumptions yeah and to try and see things from other mm. people's perspectives absolutely and and you can only do that by having conversations actually exactly and so my one thing is like people who are pro-choice will think very poorly about people who are Mm. pro-life mm. it'll be like to the extreme of well the pro-life people um just want to control women's bodies mm. um they don't really care about the actual babies being born mm. and yes maybe there are some people like that yeah definitely but maybe there are people that mm. genuinely just don't think it's right yeah and then on the same end pro-life people want to label the pro-choice movement mm. as people who just want to have abortions for fun and just yeah. want to kill babies mm. and that's not the case yeah so go listen to our abortion episode by the way yes yeah. well it was called let's talk about sex yeah, baby <laughs> <laughs> and then again like now going back to covid some people like i've seen in christian circles will on the one hand say you need to trust God mm. and live your life. Because if you really trust God to keep you safe from COVID, mm. then, you know, and maybe you should question your faith. Which, Yikes. okay, yeah. on the one hand. Are you wearing a seatbelt? Yes. That's my question. On the one hand, then I, let's just say, won't get the vaccine mm. because, like, we don't know the long-term effects. But mm. then my question to you is, but what happened to trusting God? Oh, true. So I think it's just important that we as people first of all stay open-minded mm. but then also check our own views and make sure that we aren't contradicting mm. ourselves yeah you're allowed to have true. different opinions but mm. yeah just show love yeah just to wrap up the vaccine conversation and i know we've spoken a lot about this this episode might actually be a vaccine episode <laughs> rather than <laughs> the paradox of tolerance it's okay but even something else we need to take in to consideration like mm. you said is how people are raised yeah. and i've often heard so i mean go do your research but a lot of the um i think it's the there's certain african communities where i'm talking like people who grew up in the zulu culture mm. um and 
they've chosen not to get the vaccine Mm -hmm. and as a person sitting behind their phone living this privileged life Mm -hmm. with like lots of access to all kinds of information yes in your mind you're saying oh but it's because they're uneducated Mm -hmm. and again this calls into this idea of racism and the superiority complex white saviorism yes but the reality is that just being black and living in this country mm-hmm. and being at an age where you lived through apartheid mm-hmm. at the time vaccine meant sterilization mm-hmm. like people would go onto farms mm-hmm. and black laborers would be sterilized mm-hmm. and so in their mind it's like i don't trust the government mm-hmm. that's just how i've been born and how can we fault people for believing that when they've been subject to it mm-hmm. in that's their true. past that's very true so you just be open-minded be gentle be gentle but once again you don't have to be like that with every single idea that anyone expresses yes you know you can be tolerant of the person Mm -hmm. without accepting their view exactly and you don't need to be friends with everyone like no if someone someone's morals are so against yours you absolutely do not need to tolerate that person you don't need to like go and fight them or whatever yes but like i don't know i feel like to an extent you don't need to you don't need to keep on having that same argument there's a point there's wisdom in silence yeah and i think there's also a point like where it'd be online sometimes you just need to unfollow someone that is the (laughs) best way just not to support them yes because then you also there's less hate in your heart because you're not seeing it and being frustrated with the person so like simply unfollow unfriend or even in person just say like listen like this is too much for me i can't actually deal with it and yeah i mean if you feel really passionately about some social issue if you feel that someone is being racist or whatever the issue is don't be afraid to you know speak out against it but don't do it in a way that you are shaming them personally yes um obviously like there are different um ex- <laughs> there are different like levels that someone can be yes hateful or intolerant mm-hmm. that you don't need to i don't know i don't know how you deal with that kind of stuff yes. i've never been subject to it but yeah, it's a, it's a complicated issue. Yeah, I just think these are like interesting conversations to have. Definitely. And ones that sometimes don't come to a, a proper conclusion because it's an issue you can continue yeah, talking it's about. It's multifaceted. It's multifaceted. <laughs> so yeah, please let us know your thoughts. Yeah, um, absolutely. What do you tolerate? What mm. do you not tolerate? Do you think all ideas should be tolerated? Yes. Or should everyone have a title, like have a platform on social media? Mm-hmm. That is a good question. Even if they're spreading hate, should they have it? This is, Who knows? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, let us know your thoughts. Also, sometimes like this is a cool conversation about mm. an idea or a thought mm. um, a philosophy if you yeah. will so let us know if you want us to have more conversations about this what topics yeah. would you like us to chat yeah. about and feel free to leave a comment underneath our youtube video or yes, no one ever on comments instagram. No so one rude comments. Um, or even just send us a dm on instagram at in other words underscore podcast so yes. then we can chat slide with you. in there indeed slide in the dms all right cool thank you so much guys and we will see you next time